What's up, you guys? Welcome back to the Winner Circle. Today's video, I'm about to give you guys four powerful signs that you are stepping into the best version of yourself. If you've been asking yourself if you're doing a good job, are you on the right path? Um, if you're wondering if you're slacking too much, because we tend to be a little bit hard on ourselves, okay? I'm going to give you four indefinite signs that is going to be your confirmation that you are stepping into your best self, the greatest version of yourself, your highest self, whatever you want to call it. But before we get into the meat of this video, if you are new here, do what you got to do to become part of the winner's circle. Subscribe, like, follow, share this video, tap the bell, whatever platform you're watching this on. Do what you got to do to take action on becoming part of the winner's circle. Because in the winner's circle, we are definitely elevating each other and living our best lives okay we elevating consciousness awareness um expanding our minds educating each other we 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 just becoming bosses okay within our own selves okay so do what you got to do but if you've been rocking with me for a minute you know i love y'all i love y'all so much i do this to help y'all you guys are helping me as i'm doing this to help you guys it is reciprocity reciprocated energy okay you guys but let's get into it let's get right into it okay because a lot of times, y'all know I'm a life coach and I be talking to a lot of people who just really question if they're on the right path, if they're doing the right thing. Um, they feel like they're not doing enough. And usually um, you guys are doing the right thing. You're doing more than enough. You just really don't really have people um, in your corner to tell you that. Um, and I, I've experienced that myself. I had to be my own children. I had to say, you know what, you are doing great because I didn't necessarily have people telling me you're doing a good job. You're doing a good job. Da, da, da. So usually you just need somebody to tell you that you're doing amazing okay and you guys are doing more than enough you are always enough so let's get into these four signs that you are stepping into the greatest version of yourself okay the first one is you learn that pain is necessary okay and it's not to say that you want pain but you understand that it's a part of you evolving going through highs and lows valleys trials and tribulations it is so necessary for you to evolve properly okay um although pain is uncomfortable pain is a, f a powerful tool it's a teacher and it's a catalyst for growth okay um you don't grow when you don't go through nothing if you never are challenged if you are never um pushed to do something to step out of your comfort zone you are not going to grow the bottom line is we don't grow in comfort we're growing we're uncomfortable so as much as discomforting pain is when i say pain i don't mean like you know you got hit by a car or something i don't mean that kind of pain i mean something like um okay you, you hit a milestone in your business and now you're having to to go through some things and try to really maneuver things you have to manage money differently um you might hit a hit hit, hit a something in your relationship i'm talking about these monumental life-changing things that are painful to our soul internally not something that caused you physical pain like um you know somebody hit you in the head with a dodgeball i'm not talking about that kind of pain i'm talking about that internal pain to where um to where things have to change okay so when you're going through something and you're like oh my god this is painful this is dreadful you don't see a light at the end of the tunnel this is putting you in a position for elevation. It is positioning you for change, okay? Anytime that change is on the horizon, you're going to be pushed and put in an uncomfortable circumstance because when we're uncomfortable, we think on our toes, we think outside the box. It helps you to start to navigate differently. It helps you to really get out of that comfort zone and really start to um, expand your mind, expand your... Um, your um, Oh, it's on the tip of my tongue. Expand your um your your ability to stay solution oriented. It it expands your mind for for that next level. A lot of people, you know, are manifesting next levels. They're trying to take their business to level next level. They mindset, they they finances, but. The old you can't go. The old you is not prepared for that billionaire you. The old you, your old mindset is not in alignment to where you're trying to act, what you're asking God for, what you're manifesting, where you're trying to hedge, where you're the the direction that you're heading to. So things have to change. God said, if you need thicker skin to get to where you get to, to get to where you need to get to, I'm going to thicken you. You're going to be put in situations to where you acquire that thick skin, and it's going to be uncomfortable. You don't know how to set boundaries until you're put in a situation like, huh? That person kind of um, pushed over me. I bet, the, I bet that won't happen again. You don't know where you need shaping up until you're in a situation to say, I need to shape up. <laughs> you guys understand what I'm saying? So when you're in that pain, those uncomfortable spots, it is essential for evolving. It is essential 
for growth, okay? It is essential for, for things to take a change. Anytime you're experiencing something uncomfortable, it is teaching you something. It is leveling you up. When you are uncomfortable, I want you guys to start thinking about it as, okay, what is this teaching me? Not why is this happening to me? Because that, that means that you're hosting a... Um, kind of like a victim mindset. This is happening to me. Da, da, da. No, what is this trying to teach me? What am I learning from this? Because I can guarantee you, if you look back at something that was uncomfortable, morally painful for you, um, a situation where you didn't know what you were going to do, you didn't see a light at the end of the tunnel, you look back and you'd be like, I learned a lot from that situation. I learned better time management, better money management, how to set boundaries, who's for me and who's and who's not for me. Um, you, you learned how to read energy. You learned how to read other people. You, you learned how to um, um, avoid unnecessary necessary conflict before it even gets to you because you've been put in situations that expose these things for you and now you're equipped with the proper mindset, the proper tools, the proper um, strength to, to now navigate these things because remember new levels equals new devils. That don't mean just things just go away but now you are properly equipped with the tools that you need to navigate this higher level of, of wealth, this higher level of consciousness, this higher level of um, fame or whatever the case may be. Um, I like to use the, the, the flower thing as an example. When you plant, uh, uh, when you plant a seed for a flower, you know, you dig a, a, a hole and then you put the seed in the hole, you throw dirt on top of it. And that's what it feels like. You, you, you dug in a hole and dirt is just all this chaos, all this BS is, is being thrown at you on top. But as the seed starts to grow and bust through that dirt, now it's, it has, um, it, it, it's beautiful because it has bust through it has bust through all that dirt that's been thrown on top of it and that's what life circumstances are when you're uncomfortable all it is is just that dirt thrown on top of you but that then you look back at the flower the dirt was necessary it had all the proper nutrients all in the soil it had um it, it, it was in the wild it, you know all of these things that provided it the nutrients to grow and that's what those experiences are to you it provides you with proper tools for you to be able to bust through that dirt and elevate your life to the next level okay so pain is necessary. Discomfort is necessary. Being, being put in a position to where you're forced to be solution oriented, where you're forced to think out of the box, that is how you expand your life, your mind, your awareness on in every aspect, okay? So it is necessary. Learn to embrace it and learn to ask yourself, what, what is this teaching me versus why is this happening to me, okay, you guys? That's a juicy one, okay? So it, that is the, one of the main things you know you are headed in your best, your best version of yourself is when you start to realize that you are not a victim here, that these things are happening for you and they are assisting you on your journey and it is shaping you into being the boss dog hog that you need to be for your next elevation, your next level. Okay, you guys, I love y'all. If you know that pain is essential, um, that, that, that being uncomfortable is essential for growth, leave me a comment in the comment section and say, Pain is essential for growth. Discomfort is essential for growth. Okay, you guys, that's that's one of the biggest takeaways from this video. When you stop being the, in that victim mindset, why is this happening to me? And what am I gonna do? And you start to say, okay, you know what? This is teaching me some valuable lessons. Let me stay solution oriented. You, my friend, are on your way to becoming the best version of yourself, okay? Moving on, moving on. So the second one, the second sign that you are becoming the best version of yourself is setting boundaries. You're able to set boundaries without feeling bad. You're able to set boundaries without hesitation. You're able to set boundaries with your best interest first and not someone else's. And this has nothing to do with you being selfish, although um, I can make another video about the concept of being selfish because any successful person will tell you that you have to develop a sense of selfishness. It's not even selfish. A sense of selfishness in order to get to the top, in order to get to where you need to be, in order to keep your cup full until you're able to, to replenish other people's. But anyways, that, that could be a whole nother video, but... You're able to set boundaries with with keeping you in mind first. You're you're no longer depleting yourself. You're no longer doing things for other people that you don't want to do. You're no longer putting other people before you. And and that's not to say that you you can't put people before you. But what I'm saying is you you know how to navigate on when it's appropriate to put someone's needs before you and when it's not appropriate. You know when 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 you should be um pouring into someone and because you have that energy you have that strength you have that time you have that you're you're able to put forth that effort versus just depleting yourself and you just 
giving, 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 people making withdrawals and no deposits. Comment below, people be making withdrawals and no deposits, y'all. So you're able to navigate this, okay? Because I'm not saying that it's bad to put other people before your before yours, but you've got to make sure that your cup is full. Is your cup full? If your cup is full, comment that your cup is full. You cannot help someone or give someone resources if you ain't got them. And that's the bottom line. That's like someone asking you, hey, can I borrow $100? And you don't got $100, but you're like, yeah, I got you. How are you going to give someone something, plug somebody with something, give resources to someone, help someone if you do not have these things yourself, if you do not embody these things yourself? How can you physically give that person that $100 if you physically do not have that $100? You understand what I'm saying? You cannot give somebody something that you don't have. But a lot of people are doing that. They're giving, 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 depleting themselves. And they're not in a position to do so. That This is why people are, are miserable and friendships fall out and people go into depression and anxiety and they get anxiety when they see that person calling. It's because people are not navigating life the proper way. So again, the second sign that you are reaching your highest self, your, your best version of yourself is you are able to set boundaries without feeling bad, without hesitation. Because what happens is when you say yes to someone, let's say your friend call you and she's like, girl, on Tuesday, can you take me to the airport? And I'm just making up stuff. But girl, can you take me to the airport? And you're like, you're like, yeah, 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 sure, I got you. And then you hang up the phone and you think about it like, Tuesday is my day off. That's why she asked me, which is cool. I know like she asked me for my day off, but I don't want to spend my day off doing what she want to do. I don't want to spend my day off catering to her. And again, it, that doesn't make you a bad person. Someone else's needs, someone else's emergency, someone else's priority is not your priority. Someone else's emergency is not your emergency. And that does not make you a bad person. That means that if everyone could pour into themselves and show up with to each other with the full cup, everybody is happy. That's what that means. Okay. So when you tell your friend yes, and then later on to be to to resent that yes, because Tuesday comes and it's your day off and you want to sleep in because you deserve to sleep in because you you working your butt off, you working six, seven days a week or whatever the case may be. And that day comes, and you have resentment towards saying yes. That means you actually said yes to her, but no to yourself. Yes to him, but no to yourself. You say yes to other people, but you're telling yourself no, you're denying yourself of your own rest your own ability to um to sit and relax and reflect and do nothing i don't care if you're just sitting at and staring at the four walls it doesn't matter what you're doing if the answer is no the answer is no it doesn't matter what you're doing it, it literally it does it doesn't matter if you sit on the bed in one spot for 24 hours if that's what you want to do to get yourself centered and make sure you're not overworked overthinking you in relaxation mode and this is what you do to make sure that you are whole content complete and full then that's what you need to do. So you are able to say no without feeling bad for others because this is something that you need. You're telling yourself yes first, okay? So let me give you a tip on how to um, not jump to not not jump the gun and say yes right away. And with, to, to be able to then later on res, resent the fact that you said yes. Because I know that y'all been there. Man, say I've been there before. If you've been there before, we've all been there before. Comment below been there before been there done that okay let me know if y'all been there and done that you said yes to somebody you'd be like why did i commit to that why so here's a tip if somebody is asking you to do you a favor on a day off or or whatever and you you don't know if you want to do it or in that moment you might feel like you will but you think you know that you have a pattern of saying yes and then later on regretting it or whatever don't say yes right away you could read the text message excuse me you could read the text message and, and say you know what don't even you don't have to you cannot respond right away give it 20 30 minutes to think about it that way you're not bombarded with something to then give an automatic answer that you are unsure of just read it give yourself 20 minutes to really think like is this something that i want to do on my day off is this something that i want to do that day is this something that i want to do at that time of day give allow yourself to um to decipher because you allow to you your own person you, you are in charge. The person asking you for the favor is not in charge of you. So give yourself a few minutes to process the question and figure out, is this something that you want to commit to or not? Or if it's a phone call and they say, um, hey, could you um, take me to the airport Tuesday, 7 a.m.? You could just say, you know what? I'm in the middle of something. Let me call you right back and I'll be able to, uh, I'll be able to give you an answer. 
and it, you don't have to be in the middle of the thing, but you're allowing yourself to be able to process what, what they're asking and then look at your schedule and decide, okay, do I want to be up at 7 a.m. or having her at the airport at 7 a.m., which is meaning we probably leaving at 4, 5 a.m. because they got to be there early. Do I want to do that on my day off? Or any day. You don't even got to be on day off. Any day. You don't need no excuse. It's your life. Do what you want to do. Do what makes you feel good for you. It's your world. It's your life. But give yourself that time. Oh, you know what? Let me call you back. I'm in the middle of something. I'll call you back with an answer. Hang up the phone. Give yourself 20, 30 minutes. You know, process that. And be secure in whatever you decide. Be secure in whatever you decide. That is a clear indication that you are on your way, on the path to becoming the greatest version of yourself because you no longer allow people to um, guilt trip you or pity party you into doing things for them or guilt trip you because you didn't do things for them. You are focused on who you are. You are content with who you are. You put out positive energy. You help people plenty. So you have the luxury to say no when you want to say no because you do your due diligence. That's a huge sign confirmation that you are on the way to becoming the greatest version of yourself able to say no without feeling bad okay you setting those boundaries okay so the third one let me get some water y'all be drinking your water if you're part of the winner's circle you got to drink your water i love water though y'all i'll be drinking so much water but anyways um, the third one, the third sign that you are becoming the greatest version of yourself is you embrace change, okay? There's so many people out there who are just scared and terrified of change. And I get it because you don't know what's at the end or on the other side. So it's like, oh my God, what's going to happen? How is this cookie going to crumble? How is this going to play out? You don't know. But change is good. Change provides um, growth, evolvement, um, renewal. Change, change encompasses all of that. Renewal, growth, evolvement, all of that. Um, change is inevitable. Not only is it in inevitable, but it's essential for growth. Just like the season change. It's a cycle of life. It's a rhythm of life. And trying to resist change is just as futile as, just, as trying to... Um, it's trying to prevent winter from changing into spring. Change opens up the door for opportunities, lessons, experiences. Just ride that wave. As a matter of fact, when you avoid change, you're putting a cap on your own growth. When you embrace change, that's how you open up energetically for, for God to work through you and open up doors. That's how you open up energetically for the universe to, to construct and bring things um uh, bring things and new experiences into your circumstances, into your in, into your reality. That's the bottom line, you guys. So learn to embrace change and have a positive connotation like, it's going to work out. It's going to work out just fine. It's going to work out just fine. You're going to be just fine. You are supposed to change. You are supposed to grow. You are supposed to, to evolve. When you're resisting change, you are literally putting a cap on your own involvement, your own growth, your own experiences, your own doors that... If you, if you, let's just say, uh, okay, I'll have to use myself. I, I'm from California. If I have been so scared to move out of California my entire life, then I would have never known what Colorado had to offer me. I went from California to Colorado. Now I'm in Georgia. Um, and I lived in Colorado for 11 years. But if I was so scared and resisted to change, I would have never known what Colorado had to offer for me because different states have different things to offer people. Different environments, different cities, different places have different experiences, different doors open that may not be available to you in that same hometown that you're in. So if I, if I would have just been so scared, resistant change, um, I would have never known what Colorado had to offer me. Colorado offered me so many things that really shaped me into the woman that I am, that really shaped my discipline, my attitude, my personality, my drive, my determination, my hustle. And then also coming to Georgia. If I was scared of that change, but I came for business. Uh, but if I was scared to take that leap, not know that leap, that leap, not knowing what's gonna happen, I wouldn't be where I am today. Change is essential and it's a part of growth. It's a part of expansion. Experience equal expansion. Comment that below, y'all. Experience equal expansion. When you experience new things, you expand your mind. When you experience new things, you expand your bag. When you experience new things, you expand your awareness. When you experience new things, you expand your consciousness. When you experience new things, you expand your mindset of what 
the world has to offer and what miracles can happen for you, what doors can open for you, okay? Experience, or I mean, um, change is a catalyst for growth, you guys. Embrace change. Change is not bad. Change is good, okay, you guys? Book a session with me if you have not booked a session with me. You guys are missing out if you haven't booked a session with me. You Man, if you have booked a session with me, let me know in the comment section. Give some feedback because we're changing lives out here, y'all. Let people know. Give feedback. Let people know the life-changing experience experiences that you have experienced um, from sessions with me. The growth, the mentality, the maturity, the the, the confidence, the, the booster. Let us know in the comment section. Let other people know um, just how of a, how much of a blessing the, the session was for you guys because you guys are giving me tons of feedback. You guys are booking other sessions with me, just follow-up sessions just to let me know what you what changes you guys are experiencing for the better. And I'm I'm in love with it, okay? I love y'all so. <laughs> I love y'all, okay? I love y'all so much. But book a session with me. Let's get this thing rolling. I do have a New Year, uh, New Year special. That's what you, you can look for. And then I also have a Black History Month special that you can look for. Okay, but anyways, number four. The fourth sign that you are becoming the best version of yourself is you start to question your old beliefs. And this one could be difficult. It could be scary. It could be... Like, oh my God, am I doing something wrong? And it could be beliefs, religious beliefs, beliefs spiritual beliefs, um, any kind of beliefs that, that you grew up believing in, you start to question, I don't know if I believe in that. I don't know if I want to practice that. I don't know if, um, if this aligns with me. It doesn't mean that you're being difficult. It doesn't mean that you're intentionally trying to go against um, what your parents or what people taught you. It just means that questioning your old beliefs is a pivotal step into self-discovery. Everyone who um, becomes more enlightened, who's raising their consciousness, raising their awareness, who is growing mentally and um, spiritually, go through these things, okay? It is so normal if you are not stagnant in your life and you are growing constantly because growth has no destination. It's all about constant involvement. So when you start to question your old beliefs, it is a pivotal step into self-discovery because you guys, 10 times out of 10, and I'm going to say it again. 10 times out of 10, your belief system, the things that you believe are inherited from people around you, are inherited from your grandparents that taught your parents that taught you, are inherited from the, the generations before that, are inherited from people um, who who told you something on and on and on and on and on as a child and it's kind of implemented, so to speak, brainwashed. And, and I don't mean that in a negative way because our parents, our grandparents, or whoever, and so on and so forth, typically they do the best that they can with the tools that they have. So it's no shade on anyone. But but when you are on that journey and you are growing from the inside out spiritually, you start to question things like, that ain't making sense. The math ain't mathing. I don't believe that. It means that you are finding something. So, and what you're seeking is seeking you too. This is why you're having that conflicting energy. It, it, it's pulling on you. Enlightenment is pulling on you. And that's why you have those thoughts like, I don't believe that. Like it, it's trying, whatever, whatever belief you're, whatever you're looking for, it's seeking you and it's trying to align you with something different. So you questioning your old beliefs is you aligning, you are tuning, tuning yourself to like a radio station, tuning yourself to something that aligns with you. If you were taught hip hop, but you prefer rock and roll, rock and roll is calling you. And so you trying to tune in to rock and roll. And I'm just using a radio because, um, you can understand frequency a little bit better that way. But, um, all it is is pulling on you to align yourself to what, what's true to you and what fits you. And again, I've said this in other videos and I'll say it again. Your belief system, God gives us free will and how we exercise free will is through your belief system. If you believe, and this this is no shade to any religion, none, none of that, okay? I respect all people. But if you believe, let's say you're a Christian, you believe that, oh, you're a sinner, don't do this, this, this. That's just your belief system. Your belief system does not affect the next person belief system. But it's true in your world because that's what you believe. But if the next person is not a Christian and they don't believe in a hell, it doesn't affect them. And I cannot stress it enough. It does not affect them. Of course, you think it's the end all be all because that's your belief system. You can't experience, you're, you're not, you don't, you don't, you, you haven't experienced it's something that you can't believe in. That's where your belief system is. So it's the end all holy grail for you. But if someone who is not a Christian who does not believe in that, it 
doesn't affect them. It is not their belief system. Therefore, it's not their truth. It is not effective in their world. It's not active in their world. They're allowed to exercise their own belief system, okay? And that's just the bottom line. So when you start to question things and say, hmm, this doesn't align with me, this doesn't fit me, or or you're just trying to say, you just have questions like, well, if this is this, then why this? And it, it doesn't even have to be religious. It could be about mathematics. It could be about anything. But once you start to question things that you were taught and you start seeking things for your own knowledge that suit you, that sit well with you, it's uh, it's huge. It's astronomic, astronomical for self discovery. Okay. And it doesn't mean that the, your old beliefs that your family believe in, it doesn't mean that it's wrong. They're allowed to exercise their own belief system, just like you are, whatever you do believe to be true in your world. That's your truth. That's what it is. That's what it is. Okay. So again, it's not that you're trying to be disrespectful. It's not that you're trying to be difficult. It's a part of self-discovery. It's a part of evolving. It's a part of you stepping into who you truly are and figuring out who you are and what aligns with you and what makes you comfortable and leaving behind beliefs that you've adopted instead of beliefs that really resonate with you. That's what that's about, okay, you guys? I love y'all so much. Those are the four signs that you are becoming the best version of yourself. Let's recap, let's recap. You learn that pain is necessary. You know how to set boundaries without being, um, without without feeling bad. It was conducive for your mental health and your growth. Um, you're able to embrace change because you know change is a part of evolving and growth. And you know it's a catalyst for growth and it's a part of renewal. And and you are questioning old beliefs. That means you are stepping into the re the direction of self discovery. Self discovery is all about becoming the greatest version of yourself. It's stepping away from your old self and stepping into something better. Stepping into something that that um, is conducive to your mental health, your growth, wherever you're trying to reach, what aligns with you, what makes you feel comfortable, instead of listening to um, the direction of other people around you and going within. Okay, you guys, I love you so much. Let me know if, if these signs resonate with you. Or if you are becoming the greatest version of yourself. I love you guys. I'll see you next time on the Winter Circle.